Melodyne's interface has been notably simplified in version 4 um, and you have distinct areas where things go on also access to more parameters at once. Um, we have these side panels uh, which are very useful for accessing all kinds of information. They're customizable. They're a very good way of getting at certain parameters, tracks, notes and things. We also have the uh, tracks editor, uh, the sound editor and the note editor windows which can all be turned on and off which sit one above the other. Uh, and you'll see those in action shortly. Um, and then there's also the ability to actually access the tempo editor as well, which you'll only access through this, you drop down menu, and eventually you can edit tempo, assign tempo and things like that. And that sits above the note editor area itself, where a lot of the kind of action takes place. So now if we go and uh, look at importing some audio tracks, um, I'm going to import these multi-tracks from, uh, from a previous session, these four stereo files exported from Audio Workstation and you can see that the analysis uh, starts straight away and analyzing pitch, timing and things like that. Um, the the algorithms that are assigned to each track it's actually done automatically so you can see if we select the drums you can see it's assigned a percussive algorithm um, with the piano it's the uh, polyphonic decay um, with synth lead and vocals we got melodic and so some of these work in a monophonic manner some of them work in a polyphonic manner depending on the material that's been detected and what's in there these buttons uh, along the top in the tracks area allow you to determine what's being edited and what you can actually view whilst you're editing um, and uh, which means it's a very useful way of actually referencing material without actually editing it at the same time. Uh, and multi-track editing has been vastly expanded in uh, Melodyne 4. It really is a kind of a joy to use, in fact. So we can select through the different track elements there. You see got vocals back to the drums, and you can see how it's been sliced. It sits on one track, and it doesn't reference the notes along the left. Um, so this is actually showing you this percussive material rather than melodic material. What's really interesting as well is uh, I imported all these audio elements and immediately the tempo was detected. Um, and it used the drums as reference uh, mainly here. We're going to edit tempo and we zoom into this tempo uh, area here. Try and get a little bit the right zoom level so we can actually see what's going on. You'll see there's a tempo curve and it's automatically created this really nice uh, tempo curve that actually sh that, that tracks the tempo brilliantly well. And you'll find that Melodyne actually does a pretty good job even with non percussive material as well in terms of tracking the tempo and trying to work out what's going on. It also done a pretty good job in terms of the, the leading notes and things like that. So it really does an excellent job. Now you can edit the tempo if you want and uh, redraw that curve. You can um, make it tempo constant, which literally just does a flat line. So you can now it goes to about 60 BPM in this case. It's kind of the average of what it was before, flat line tempo. If we undo that, we can also export the tempo, bring that window up, flick to tempo map, entire length, export, and we can create a tempo map which creates a MIDI file with the tempo map in there which we can just drag straight into our audio workstation. So it does a really fantastic job of um, managing tempo um, on recordings that weren't recorded to a click or anything like that. A really nice feature of uh, Melodyne 4. Uh, and of course there's lots of other features and things we can, m things we can do with tempo there. What I'm going to do now is um, dip into um, using the sound editor and I'm importing this drone. Sound editor is a really interesting part of Melodyne 4. You can do some really quite crazy stuff. You can see this drone has been detected, interestingly, as a polyphonic um, file. Now, of course, it, it is, I guess, strictly speaking. I'm using scale snap there to ensure that anything I do inside here will actually conform to what Melodyne has calculated as the scale. So I can shift individual elements. And a drone like this, really, they're going to kind of be harmonics rather than definable notes. But it does allow you to do some quite interesting things in terms in sort of sound design terms. And definitely worth playing around with. A lot of trial and error, certainly. But you can actually reshape the harmonics of a sound in quite interesting ways. And this is sort of obviously without actually accessing the MIDI notes or anything like that. And you can do it mid-held note or chord. Now, in the sound editor, we also have lots of new parameters to play around with. Actually, change the the spectral balance. 
the spectral balance in terms of the dynamics between notes, so how varied the notes are between one another. Harmonic balance, we can adjust the low and high harmonics separately. And this is done obviously per, just for each of the notes. We can also do the harmonics together. We also have lots of sliders to allow us to adjust the balance between odd and even harmonics. Um, introduce comb filtering, all kinds of really weird and wonderful things that do either improve, change or ruin the spectral balance depending on what you're trying to achieve or how familiar you are with the controls. But as I said, lots of trial and error really in terms of what you're doing here. It can be very interesting though. Resynthesize, as you'd expect, resynthesizes the elements so basically creates a synthesizer which actually plays back the harmonics of the sound and allows you to adjust the spectrum form and amplitude envelopes for each note which is quite mad what i do now though is go and select that audio and actually go into the algorithm and choose um, the melodic algorithm so it's, it's going to think of this really as kind of one held piece of sound uh, rather than trying to detect harmonics or individual notes within that, which can be beneficial when you're, when you're exploring sound design. Now what it's done, it's actually set it up as a series of, it, it thinks there are a few notes in there, so I'm using the note separator tool to turn this into, in effect, one blob of audio. And uh, blob is the technical term there, which Slemony used for the, uh, for the Melodyne <laughs> audio detected notes. Now I'm going to reset the, uh, the sound editor parameters so we can actually play around and actually see what else we can get out of it in but using a different algorithm here. I can obviously change the formants of that sound. Let's move the, uh, the the cycle range around a little bit so we get this just portion here. I can use correct pitch. I'm just going to do that much. It's noticeable. But I can go in and actually also adjust things like the pitch modulation, so that kind of the vibrato element of the sound there, and flatten it out a little bit more. It kind of does a pretty few weird and wonderful things there. If I readjust the formants, use the harmonic sliders to create comb filtering, go to synth mode and resynthesize what's going on. Again, lots of trial and error in terms of what you do here. In fact, this is a lot of stuff that's actually been going on under the hood with Melodyne before, which is kind of hidden. It detects a lot of these elements, but it uses them in the calculations. Now you have access to ways of, uh, of adjusting them. So we'll now look at changing the spectral envelope, and this happens it's on a per note. This thing is one long note, so this is the envelope, so each time the note starts, you get this change of spectral balance, change in formants, Do the same thing with amplitude as well. For some weird and wonderful effects, play around with the pitching. It would be great if you could actually draw in changes in these curves as if they're automation. So maybe something for Melodyne 4.5 or something like that. So we've got that, and now I'm going to look at um, what we could do with with a more traditionally polyphonic element, and that is with the um, uh, with a piano. Uh, so piano chords here. Now, of course, we, we, this isn't this isn't about correcting vocals. We're looking at some more extreme um, abilities to play around with audio here. Um, you will have seen lots of people explain how to sort of deal with vocals and things like that and I guess Melodyne 4 is interesting because of these more unusual things that it can do. So I've got piano chords. And it's rightly detected the various notes in there. So it does some interesting things as far as the harmonics are concerned. Now we can adjust our spectrum, our formant, and amplitude. 
So you get these strange reshaped piano notes. to the EQ, which rather than being an EQ in the traditional sense, just changes the way in which the relative balance of those uh, harmonics in there. Lots to play around with in Melodyne 4.